thank you very much for having me. You know, it's always a, a wonderful thing to actually present to, to a group of uh, people that are all interested in project management. I feel that the particular topic we're looking at right now, managing scope creep, is uh, rather important uh, for uh, all project managers because at some point in their career, if not every project, they're going to be running into issues regarding scope creep. And based upon my experience and research, I've, I've found certain things that project managers need to be doing a little bit more often. Um, some of these things are, are directly related to things related in the uh, project manager's body of knowledge. Some of it's based on personal experience and, and other research that goes beyond the, the, the PMBOK. Um, I find that uh, there are a number of things that need to be done uh, in order to, to mend scope creep in all types of projects. And I will be using different examples throughout my presentation. However, in many cases, I, I feel that they're applicable in, in almost every in industry. Um, so it's not like uh, uh, the, the best practices we'll be discussing now are, are limited to either in scope or to, to just IT projects or construction projects. Uh, my personal background has been uh, very strong in construction and IT, um, but uh, I know that in other areas, uh, uh, many of these practices are, are highly applicable, be it in healthcare, be it in logistics, um, be it in any field of project management. So I just want to put everyone at ease that uh, regardless of the field or, or area that you might be specialized in, there will be something in here for you. Um, so. Uh, to kind of start off, I kind of have a, a little bit of an agenda here, uh, which is going to kind of give a high level of the, the topics and kind of best practices that I'm going to discuss. Um, they are in somewhat of an order. Um, however, depending on the, the, the project type, you might find uh, that some of them are a little bit more applicable than others. And it also depends, in, in my opinion, on the management style and personality type of the project manager. Um, and then just to kind of quickly go through them, um, the first one is a section I'm going to call Getting to Know. Um, there will be a section on change order control, communication, scope creep awareness, and uh, using culture to deflect scope creep. I feel that culture can be very important to help uh, keep scope creep down. Um, I have a section on the, the hidden cost of change because I feel that uh, all change is going to come with a cost and risk, and, and that needs to be understood as well as community, communicated to the client and stakeholders. Um, I wanted to touch on also the power of persuasion um, because I feel that's an area that every project manager can become more skilled in and it will only help them in every project moving forward. After that, I'm gonna have some closing comments and then we will have a question and answer session. Um, I am hoping that we can hold off all the questions until the end. Um, however, it will be uh, a moderated. So um, if something does come up, um, we might address it, but if it's not, certainly we'll address it at the end. So um, don't worry if I, if I don't necessarily see the question pop up on the screen, it will be addressed at the end and we'll make sure to, to get all those addressed as well as anything else that might come up afterwards. Okay, so I wanted to, to, to start by, oops, by actually going the wrong way. All right, now I'm going to start by this little section I call getting to know. Um, I, I find that this is a, a habit of many project managers, regardless of experience level, that they feel that uh, the minute they start saying no to the client is the, the minute they might get fired. Um, I think that uh, that is not always the case. I, I think, you know, yeah, sure, it could happen. But if, if your client is maybe that sensitive, perhaps maybe that's not the project that's right for you. But, but no, I, I want people to understand that saying no doesn't mean necessarily that it's not going to happen or that it's not a reasonable request. Uh, you know, you, you, you need to get into that feeling where you are going to say no back to the client. And, and I want people to, to kind of think about this, uh, you know, this is always a kind of the, the parallel I give when you, you talk about, uh, you know, getting to know and, and even a little bit with negotiation is, um, you know, I, I had that little picture of the, the no durian. And for people that are familiar with uh, durian fruit, um, it's a particular pungent uh, fruit that's uh, out in the, the, the Far East um, that is banned in public places in many cases because the scent, um, I, I will admit, I have tasted it. It was pretty awful. It was astringent. It was, uh, it was basically like a mouthful of aspirin to me. Now, I understand that some people find it as a delicacy. 
However, you know, many public places uh, there uh, ban durian fruit. So uh, it's particularly interesting to see, in, uh, you know, as I was traveling in the Far East, to see these signs up there uh, in elevators, in hotels, in, in, in uh, malls, and, and simply it was making it clear that, uh, you know, you could not have this, this fruit there because um, although some people find it a delicacy, many, many others find it terrible. Um, and uh, they are so uh, aggressive about it. They will find people and, you know, kick you out of the hotel if you're caught with it, things like that. And, and I bring it up because it, it's, it seems to be a very interesting customer service balance that you have there where you, the, the hotel or public area wants you to come and spend money, but they are giving you something forbidden and, and it's a, a bit of a forbidden fruit. Um, and it seems a little bit anti-customer service, but um, by these locations, you know, advertising it and educating people about it, um, it becomes acceptable. Like, uh, you know, no one's going to, uh, you know, be surprised by this fine when it happens. And this is kind of where I'm going with this, this concept of getting to know is that, well, in some cases, you, you can say no to your paying guests or clients. But at the same time, you, you need to do it in a, in a way that's diplomatic and reasonable. And uh, it, it's going to help, uh, you know, offer uh, alternatives while also defining the risks. The, the little sign there is showing, OK, the, the alternatives don't bring durian into this location. And the risk is if you do, you will be fined a thousand dollars, which, you know, seems a little steep for bringing a fruit into an area. But it's very important because it's it's offering a way to say no to customers while educating them about potentially the problems, but uh, also giving them, you know, uh, understanding and making it reasonable, making them understand because obviously uh, this durian fruit, since it's offensive to so many other people, the, the smell, it, of it, um, it, it's just not fair for one person to ruin the atmosphere of a public area with this. And, and this is kind of going back to how a good project manager has to know how to say no and be able to offer those alternatives as well as keeping the client in mind. Um, again, the, 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 if you keep the, the goals and objectives of the client in mind, um, and then you can offer alternatives or, or other ways uh, you know, to, to avoid that circumstance. Um, many times uh, you have to be able to explain to the client and the stakeholders why, you know, it's not possible or, or shouldn't, shouldn't be done. Um, and in many ways, um, the way I see it is opening up with this, uh, this, this no to the client uh, when you do obviously pick your battles. I don't think you should always do it, um, but it's too easy to fall into that trap of just always saying yes. And if you're always saying yes, then, uh, you know, when, when you finally get around to saying no every now and again, the client will tend to, to, to take notice and listen because they, they will uh, feel that, uh, you know, maybe there's something to it and you're looking out for their best interest. And that's kind of how you have to couch it is make sure you're, you're telling them, look, you know, if we, if we go down this road of change and doing this, we're going to end up late, we're going to end up over budget, we're going to end up not meeting the, the, all the deadlines that you as the clients ha have already instructed the project manager is important. And so I feel that that's uh, something you need to, to, to kind of put together. It's, it's too easy as a project manager to just always say yes. And then suddenly you're just always saying yes. And now you're agreeing to all these things you probably shouldn't have agreed to in the first place. And so uh, really uh, project managers have to, to, to get into that habit of being diplomatic, being reasonable, and then explaining and justifying their position. Um, because, you know, when, whenever you're going to uh, plan to speak to your client and tell them no, um, you better have a compelling reason and, and good justification explanation because, you know, they're going to really question, you know, well, you know, uh, why can't I or isn't this a good idea? And, and you have to make sure that the, the no is not based on the merits of the idea or of the, 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 the potential of it. It's really based on the fact that it's going to impact the, the project in a manner that is going to run against the, 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 the things that were agreed upon in the project charter and in the project scope. And, you know, if you're late and over budget, the client's going to remember you were